Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be taking another look at the standard library in the algorithms and taking a look at count and count if. So these are really useful algorithms and I'll give you a little bit more of a pragmatic example today. So we'll go ahead and write a little class and see how we can use count in this example. Because I think again, it's useful to see the building blocks, see that they exist, but to actually use them again is uh, very useful. So with that said, without further ado, let's jump to our favorite web page, CPP reference. We're going into the algorithms library today over here. And I'm going to be showing you again some of the non-modifying sequence operations that don't modify the actual container. And we're going to look at count and count if. So this returns the number of elements that just satisfy some specific criteria. So you'll notice that there is a difference between count and count if. Uh, so if we go ahead and look at these, it'll become relatively um, obvious how to use these. Um, in the sense that count just takes in some simple value and then count uh, if, if I go down here, takes in some predicates. We can write the condition as to whether or not to increment something, okay? So again, sometimes if you just wanna count uh, specific values or something in a collection, that could be useful. Uh, and count if, again, has a, a predicate that we can control for the elements that we are iterating through. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, count uh, and count if. Um, basically this just takes, um, the amount of time as far as the complexity, let's look at this is, you know, if I have N elements, um, uh, you know, how long does it take to do N comparisons with equals equals? So how do I know if something satisfies some condition again, or how long, uh, for how many elements times the computation of the predicate, uh, that's the idea. So usually linear, if you've got some simple type, maybe more, if you've got a more complicated, uh, test here, uh, but that's the idea. Alrighty, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and just dive into uh, count here. Uh, oops, and this one's just called uh, main.cpp. I think we could just go ahead and write uh, another two tests for this. Let's go ahead and start with uh, creating maybe a vector here um, of integers. Uh, I'll call it b1, 1, 3, uh, 4, 6, 8, 9, something like that, some random data here. Um, and what I want to return here, again, and this is count, so looking at the return value here, um, well, it is returning us the number of values uh, within our range that we're looking at. Oops. Um, so this should be some sort of uh, integer here. Let's see what it's actually giving us here. Uh, it's giving us a different type here. Um, it is counting things, so it should return some sort of uh, let's actually take a look at this here. Difference type here. Um, here we are. Uh, here, difference type. Um, well, it's just going to give us some uh, integral value here. Okay, so maybe a size t because um, it's going to be zero. I actually don't see if that's what's returning, but let's go ahead and play around with it. Um, and let's go ahead and run it. Um, so I think it's just going to give us some integer value here. Uh, let's go ahead and say results and count. And this will be for V1, begin, V2 to the end. And let's see the values that are equal to four, for instance. Okay. And let's go ahead and see our uh, count. And let's go ahead and print out our results uh, here. And let's go ahead and give this a run. Uh, oops, V, um, occasionally I'm typing uh, fast enough that I mistyped, but there we are. And we've got a count of one. There is one four in this range here, okay? Let's go ahead and add a few more just to see uh, how this exists here. Something like that here, four fours. And again, we get the count here, okay? It's a very simple function to use, but can be very useful if you're, um, again, trying to uh, count in some, uh, set of data, how many things satisfy this condition. Now, let's add a little bit more power here uh, and write another test here. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's use count if. So it gives us that uh, predicate here. And let's go ahead and say count if. Uh, and what I'm going to go ahead and do here is write a lambda function here. Uh, and this is our value here so, that we're looking at. Uh, or element, uh, it's probably a better uh, abbreviation for it. And what we want to do here is just say, let's return all the values uh, where the element is greater than or equal to four. 
Okay. Uh, let's see what the results are. And now we've got seven. Let's see if that's true. One, uh, oh, let me use this question. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so very nice uh, thing to look at here. So this one tends to be um, very useful, count if. Let me see if they have an actual, sometimes they provide possible implementations here. Uh, but again, we are just basically having a for loop here, checking if some value uh, is there and, you know, doing plus plus here. Okay, so this tends to work pretty nice here. And again, since you're doing this element by element, uh, and we haven't talked about this yet, but this might be a good um, candidate, but we could do this in parallel, right? We can actually load these execution policies and do something in parallel, right? If we're just looking at each element um, individually. So this is a nice one where we can get some parallelism. Uh, we don't have to have a bunch of loops. It's very self-documenting what we're doing. We are counting things, okay, uh, and accumulating them. Um, so let's go ahead and just, you know, make this example a little bit more interesting. Um, and what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just write a uh, class here or a struct. And, you know, in a game or something, you might have like some enemies. Uh, and we want to go ahead and check their state here. Okay, health, uh, for instance, let's say that they have, um, you know, some health, maybe some other attributes like an attack power of 10 or something. Um, and basically what I want to do here is write a little test here. Let's do test two. And let's have a, a vector of these enemies. And I want to see, you know, how many of them are actually alive. Okay. Uh, so something, you know, reasonable like this. Um, and let's give ourselves a, a constructor. Actually, it'll just make it a little bit easier to write this uh, uh, example. Um, and let's go ahead and say uh, H for health, A for attack. And we're just going to get, again, uh, sort of simulate this. Uh, we'll use a, uh, a member initializer uh, list here. Attack. Okay, so we've got a little constructor there. And let's go ahead and create some enemies. Uh, enemy one here. Uh, let's give them 100 health. And attack the default. Enemy number two. Enemy number three. Uh, this one's going to be, I don't know, it's going to have negative health for whatever reason. Uh, and this one's also going to have negative. Okay. Um, so now what we want to do, uh, again, and we can pretend this is all a larger project, you know, play our game for a bit, you know, uh, main loop. We'll pretend we have some more code here. And then we want to have some, uh, condition here where we maybe count, uh, enemies left. Okay. Um, and that's going to be our count if function. Count if. Okay. Um, now, typically, if I have all these uh, enemies, they might be in some other uh, collection. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, take these here. Uh, I'm just going to comment these out just so you can see them uh, set up here. Uh, but let's actually set these up in some sort of uh, vector here. So vector of enemies, uh, and we're going to have enemies equals, uh, and we'll go ahead and just initialize them like this here. Okay. So we should be able to, let's see if this uh, takes it in without any problems. And let's see. So this is effectively what we want to do here, right? Construct a bunch of these uh, enemies here um, and see... Okay, so let's um, let's give this a try. Let's fix up the syntax a little bit here with some of our structs. Um, and these guys, sometimes we make this mistake. We need the curly brace initialization here. So we know what we are initializing here, our enemies. And let me just comment this out uh, for now. Okay, and that this is the idea. Okay, great. This, this compiles. Uh, let's add in test number two. And let, let's use our count here. Okay. Now, again, this particular data structure, again, I'm just simulating this as an example here um, where we would probably have in the case of a game or some active running application, right, a way to query all these objects that are existing. And then we want to check their state, which in this case, we want to see um, what their uh, health is, okay, which is this first attribute here, okay, 
100, negative 10, and negative 50 here. Okay, so I want to count for this range here. Enemies, uh, the beginning, the enemies at the end. Uh, and this probably is the is a case where, you know, in a game or some sort of dynamic environment, uh, let's make sure that, you know, things aren't changing around uh, with our iterators. Um, and then our uh, predicate here, so we're taking in each enemy, um, and again, I probably should have just, uh, you know, a better name for this. Uh, oops, let me, let's actually refactor this a little bit here. Uh, I want to refactor enemies capital to just enemy singular. I know this is a throwaway example, but just a little bit cleaner. Um, and we have each of our enemies here. And I just want to return if the enemy's attack is greater than, uh, or health, excuse me is greater than zero okay and then we'll count them um and then we can do something um like this we'll say if enemies left is less than or equal to zero uh or if it's equal to zero let's say uh you know proceed to next level okay something like that else uh, let's go ahead and write, you have, uh, enemies left, uh, enemies to blast away or whatever. Okay. Uh, the game is okay. So something like that, uh, let's go ahead and see if that compiles and then we'll do a little, uh, code review here. Uh, let's see what I got to do here. Oh, just a little parentheses. There we are. All right, so this looks like it works. Let me just fix the indentation and then I'll make it a little bit more readable for you. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this uh, full example here, okay? So again, with test two, the idea is we wrote a uh, little struct here, enemy, uh, and this is just some object that has some health, some attack or whatever. Uh, just doing a little bit more of a pragmatic example where you might use these things. Uh, we initialize enemies or otherwise have a way to retrieve some information about our game or running application, whatever it might be. We're using count if we're iterating through the actual uh, collection. And then we have our custom uh, condition here. That's sort of the underscore if part. And this is sort of an artifact of uh, like C++ 98. I think they uh, had a bunch of these underscore if things. Maybe if they were designing this in C++ 20, they would have just called this count. But I sort of like the, the count if. It's very explicit that it uh, has a um, predicate condition here. It's not just counting some value. So it, it's pretty clean um, as it is, I would say. Um, and then I'm actually doing some logic with this result for, that we got from our algorithm, right? And all this is is merely a loop here that we're doing. But again, it's very clear what collection we're iterating through. I don't have to guess. Um, and we can see what the uh, predicate is here, okay? Um, and then based off of that, if it's uh, zero, then, you know, you proceed to the next level. Otherwise, you know, you have some more enemies to blast away. So let's see how many we had to blast away. Uh, and let's put our data up on the screen so you can uh, verify. Now, I don't know why these health are going negative, but, you know, maybe we really blasted them away. But it looks like you've still got one more enemy to take care of here. Uh, but anyways, that's just a nice little example of uh, count if. So, again, useful things. I think they help with self-documenting the code. Um, again, you could argue, yes, this is a for loop that you could certainly write, um, have a little condition and so on. But, um, you know, this tends to be very nice. Now, again, I just want to sort of emphasize, you know, the niceness of uh, these sort of algorithms libraries because, you know, you could have um, various conditions here. So let's just refactor this a little bit. Um, so let, let's pull out our Lambda uh, function here. Uh, I'm going to format it uh, just a little bit here. Um, and let's go ahead and do something like this. Auto uh, test one, you know, something like that. Um, and let's go ahead and just pass in test one. Okay. Uh, whoops. Let's see. What did I do? I uh, made a little mistake here. Um, probably missing a semicolon or something, you know, something like that. Yep. Still works. So, um, what I'm getting at here is, you know, one of the things, and again, you can argue, you can do this in a for loop, but you know, what if I want to change the condition uh, in a game and make it sort of easy? 
you know, I would argue it's easy to say, you know, um, you know, if their health is greater than 10 or something, and I could sort of try these different conditions out here. Um, uh, and let's actually make it, uh, you know, if it's greater than, I don't know, negative 40 or something, right? Because maybe enemies have a time to revive themselves. All right, now I have two, right? I have these two different tests here. Um, I could now more easily uh, turn this uh, count thing into a function and then pass these in uh, and sort of parameterize this. So again, you know, the whole idea with these algorithms is they're building blocks to make our code a little bit more flexible. But, you know, I think it gives us a little bit more freedom to, um, to play around with this stuff. I mean, this is the stuff where some languages... Um, where you get into template metaprogramming, um, you know, I do this a lot in D or something. You could have some mix-ins that you read from files that have all these different tests and, and, and generate a lot of this code, which really makes things uh, quite clean. You know, maybe not for everybody, but again, uh, a nice thing that you can do. And at the very least, we'll start looking at the execution policies. Count is probably a nice example where we could probably do this in parallel um, and still get uh, really nice performance. So anyways, thought this was a nice example. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of these sort of examples, um, maybe at various uh, times in the series, I'll, I'll put together um, using a bunch of these algorithms together because I think that would be useful. But um, with that said, though, we are collecting a bunch of algorithms, so check them out to my website. As always, uh, there's some other stuff here if you want to check it out, some nice courses. Um, and hope you enjoyed that one. Hope you learned about Countif. I think it's one of the more uh, useful ones, very clear uh, to understand how it works. All right, folks, with that said, though, thank you for your time. Thanks for your attention watching this uh, nice long video, and I'll look forward to hearing your discussion uh, below.